Communications, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, ready for the event. NanoRx, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station 4 voice check. Station, Station this, this is, is Rob Town, NanoRx Bishop Airlock Manager. How do you read me? I have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Thank you, thank you. So uh, very nice to meet you, Shannon. Uh, and thank you for a job well done installing and activating our Nanorax Bishop airlock. Uh, we followed you the whole time from our control center here within Nanorax, and it was really fun to look over your shoulder as you brought the airlock to life on orbit. You seemed very at ease and skilled at working in the airlock in a microgravity environment, and that was really fun to watch. Uh, the ISS, of course, is both your home and your workplace and as, a, as a U.S. national laboratory. And uh, after the airlock was installed, what, what did it feel like? Was it surreal to open the Node 3 hatch and see a brand new module on the station? You know, it was a little bit strange to have another module on the space station. Last time I was here, we had a, a pressurized mating adapter there, and we never opened the hatch. I never saw the inside of it. So it was really interesting to finally um, go into another part of station that didn't exist uh, a short time uh, previously. Um, what I thought was interesting as well is that it completely changed the air patterns um, in the in Node 3. So where we might have had um, one set of airflow with the Nanorax airlock there, um, it was a little bit different, and I could tell when I was exercising in the in Node 3. Okay, that is really great. So, uh, so one of the things we talked about changing the environment. Uh, our team is very proud of the workmanship that went into the airlock, and I introduced Hewlin Polk, who's actually one of our skilled technicians that brought the airlock to life on the ground. And uh, he has a question for you. All right, first and foremost, good morning from the great state of Texas. How are you doing? I am doing great. How are you? Great, great. Well, the ISS is a large machine that can get pretty noisy. Uh, how loud is the airlock compared to the rest of the station? And is sound coming from Node 3 louder inside the airlock because of its bell jar shape? You know, it's an interesting question. The, the, a lot of people think the station is, is loud, but we don't think it's very loud up here. It's kind of like being inside an office building. But um, having the Nanorex airlock there um, didn't really, I didn't really notice anything in change in the sound in the station. When we're air, inside, um, what I noticed more is it felt cold inside of it compared to the rest of the station rather than a different noise level. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much and uh, have a great day. Thank you, Hulan. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Uh, one follow-up question to the environment within the airlock is the uh, what kind of payloads and experiments do you think would be better suited for the inside of the airlock versus maybe somewhere else on board the station? You know, that is an excellent question, and I can only imagine what uh, researchers and companies are going to come up with. Um, I think what's really well suited, of course, anything that needs to be exposed to a vacuum um, that maybe needs to be changed out. So you have an experiment where you, you put something to exposed to a vacuum, bring it back in, you change something out, and put it outside again. Um, the beauty of this airlock compared to some of our air other airlocks is its size, and so we can have different configurations of hardware that go in and out of it, which I think is just awesome. Okay, great. Yeah, great. And following up that great point about it being a, a large airlock, uh, so it uh, provides kind of a big doorway outside the space, but it's uh, kind of much more than just an airlock, of course, as, as you know. Uh, we kind of call it like a, an elaborate door, if you will, because it has the ability to host payloads both inside and outside on the airlock. Um, uh, on the ground, we've been coming up with some really cool ideas. We think of how to use it. Um, do you have any, have you had any thoughts about any kind of crazy payloads that you think might be able to be neat science experiments that we could utilize the airlock for? You know, to be honest, I haven't had much opportunity to think about it. I would rather hear some of the crazy ideas you guys have come up with. I bet they're all wonderful. Okay, great. So one of the things that we've been talking about, actually, it's a great segue into the next portion, is to, uh, we're looking at a lot of agricultural research. And of course, we've we're been following all of you as you, go by, as you do a lot of space farming on board the uh, International Space Station. That's pretty neat. We've been working with our partners over in Abu Dhabi 
setting up an agricultural research area. Um, so following on that agricultural research, uh, how do you see that agricultural research that you're doing on board with affecting maybe agricultural uh, research here on the ground as well? Now, the space station is a great vantage point to take big picture views of the Earth. We can see how the Earth changes over time, over seasons, and a lot of the insights that we have of where weather patterns are changing um, from a big picture view will, will definitely affect agriculture on the ground. Also, some of what we do, we've done a few experiments with growing plants up here, but we haven't done it on a large scale. And so if you could do some large scale fa farming on space station, that would be Absolutely awesome. I can only imagine just having fresh vegetables all the time to eat. Yes, that would be really neat. It'd be neat to, to, be, to be able to do that. And I think that's a, a great point about going to uh, a longer duration. Now, maybe as we kind of segue the, out of the airlock, per se, over to uh, commercialization, um, airlock is a commercial venture uh, generated by Nanorax. Um, of course, we've got a lot of help with that. Uh, NASA is a, a, a big partner and a, a fully embraces the commercialization of low Earth orbit. So that's huge for us. So we get a lot of help from, uh, from NASA and it's a great partnership that we have. Um, thinking about that, what, what, what kind of, uh, what is an on-orbit quality or quality of life improvement? So I'm, I'm kind of big on trying to improve your life as scientists and experimenters on board the station. Uh, what kind of quality of life improvement do you think we could, the commercial industry can bring to you? You know, that's an interesting question, but I have to take sort of the long view of things. I mean, this, the space station is the way it is now, and there's some things that we would definitely like better um, if it had been reconfigured a little bit, like a dedicated place to have um, a living space. Right now, we our crew quarters are in the middle of places that we do experiments. A dedicated place for... Um, exercise would be awesome. Node 3 is great, but of course our waste and hygiene compartment's right smack dab in the middle of it, so it's, it's, not, it's not perfect. Um, but if you really look at the long view, what are we doing in space? Well, we're doing research in space and the commercialization side, which is really geared towards understanding life in space, but hopefully getting more people into space. And so I think where the commercial industry can go hopefully, maybe, is um, providing a place for um, other people to go. Space Station is a fantastic laboratory. We're doing amazing research up here, but it's not really a place for tourists, for the casual people just to come and hang out because we are a working laboratory. So in my mind, my ideal world, we'd have a place where we have a hotel. We can get lots of people up to the hotel. That's where one option of commercialization in space could be. Okay, great. Yeah, I agree. Having this kind of separate area, uh, it kind of follows in our early comment about it being your home and your workplace. And sometimes it's very difficult to differentiate the two because you're always in that same volume all the time. Okay, great. No, great answer. Great answer. Um, of course, our NANRAX team down here is comprised of, of various talents. And to introduce Julia Wolfenbarger. She's one of our mission managers who works directly with the science scientists and being able to get their experiments to, uh, to orbit. So she's got a question for you. So Julia, welcome. Thanks, good morning, Brock. Good afternoon, Shannon. Wow, I'm so excited to talk to you today. Um, the question that I have is how can commercialization of space help broaden access for students and other non-traditional researchers? Julia question and it's something that we're really interested in doing is is broadening access to space so with commercialization um, the, the more commercial companies that are involved are the more avenues that people have in getting um, experiments up to space activities up to space and access to space and so really it is just the fact that we have more avenues um, there will be by definition be more access to space which is absolutely fantastic we need more engagement Thank you so much. Totally agree. And I'm super excited to see what commercialization can do for, for all different kinds of researchers. Thank you so much, Shannon. Thanks, Brock. Thank you, Julia. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. We're looking forward to having even more science to bring on board so that uh, you and your crewmates can have uh, more science to, to, uh, to perform on, on board.
a short LOS. Uh, from the beginning of your career um, until now, how do you think the industry has progressed and uh, how do you think commercialization uh, is going to be able to keep pace with that and meeting the needs of the astronauts, the ones that are out on the on the forefront, out in space doing the science? Yeah, there certainly has been a lot of change over my career um, at NASA. I've been there <clears throat> a very long time, 30, 30 plus years. And so what I've seen is the commercialization has really picked up speed. If you look at all the commercial companies that we have now involved in the space station, we've got two different companies delivering cargo. We've got now the NanoRax airlock, just all kinds of opportunities. And I expect that to just keep increasing. Um, so. The commercial companies can keep providing us more and more to do, um, which is amazing. Uh, actually, right now we are so busy. Uh, some days we just don't know which way is up, sort of in space. No way is up. But anyway, we are so busy doing stuff um, for all the research that's going on is absolutely fantastic. And so I just see everything, just the pace just continuing to increase and more and more development happening. Also, I think what uh, the commercialization can do is get new technologies up to here, up to space station faster that we can employ in the research. Uh, we've seen that over the last few years, and I expect that to continue as well, which is going to be really good for cutting edge research that we do up here. Okay, great. Yeah, your guys uh, sounds like your job is going to get even more and more difficult and more and more busy, which is a great thing. You know. Nanorax is proud to be at one of the forefronts of one of those companies making that stuff happen and keeping you busy. Don't want you to get bored on orbit. So uh, appreciate uh, uh, your time and willingness to, uh, uh, to to work with us. And yes, the pace is really picking up. And sometimes it's tough to keep up with it here on the ground, but we really look forward to it because it really involves and gets a lot of people involved in space. And so that's what a lot of Nanorax is involved in is trying to get space for everyone. Let's try to get uh, people that have never been to space, maybe opportunities to, uh, to to get there. So that's really neat. So I'm glad you're embracing that. Appreciate it. Um, so uh, looking ahead, what's uh, what's your um, uh, what is something from life on Earth uh, that you really uh, would like to bring to the space station, maybe even beyond? Well, if you ask some of my crewmates, they want their phones with all their personal stuff on it up here. Um, we do have connectivity to the ground, but it's uh, like you saw with the LOS that we just had, we don't have it all the time. So more connectivity would be good, although that would probably distract from all the work we are doing. Um, I do think something that we talked about before is the plant life. Um, it's a pretty sterile atmosphere up here with very few plants, and so the ability to have a lot more plants, and uh, plants for fun and plants for food would be really nice. That's going to be absolutely vital when we start going to other places, Moon, Mars. Um, Let's see, other things. I don't know. Um, that's a good question. We sort of get in the mindset of we're up here to work and we put everything else aside. So um, anything with a homey touch is always nice to have up here. Okay, great. Yeah, sometimes we get involved in all work, no play. We need to be able to play and enjoy life up there as well. What about maybe artwork? I mean, another one that I was thinking about was artwork and uh, uh, bringing arts to space. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, artwork would be great. We just need a place to put it. I don't know if you can see around me very well, but we do not have an inch of space to hang any pictures. Um, but that would be great if we had other spaces. We're talking about other modules or reconfiguring the station where we could have more windows where we could see outside more. That would be lovely too. But artwork would be really interesting because that is definitely a way to get more people involved in space. If they could have their artwork in space, wow, that would be really something. Okay, great. We're going to put that to work. We'll see if uh, folks like Julia and, uh, can and see if we can motivate and inspire some people to uh, to make that happen. We'll see what we can do. Very good. Uh, and then kind of finally, uh, last question, what's your dream for the next step uh, after ISS? Oh, uh, let's see. What's coming next? Well, I think kind of the the general path that we're on at NASA in the world is is going to the moon going on to Mars starting to explore other locations with people long term that is what I really hope that we are able to accomplish in the near term as opposed to the long term I always joke that my entire career going back to the moon has been a decade away and I really hope that it's not a decade now I mean it seems like we're on a great path to get there a lot sooner we need to build uh, 
a habitat around the moon, maybe a habitat on the moon, take some of that artwork to decorate, and then from there, go on to Mars, and then who knows where. Okay, great, great. Yeah, I'd, uh, uh, I'm sure you would too, but it'd be really neat to be able to see your boots and your footprints on the moon or on the Mars uh, here in the very new, near future. So hopefully we can make that happen and we can, uh, here at NANRACS, can uh, have a part in that. Uh, so again, thank you for your time today. Really appreciate you talking with us. Uh, big thank you for, again for a job well done. Really appreciate you taking care of the airlock for us and getting her all squared away. Uh, she is now open for business. So hopefully we'll be sending science soon to be able to utilize the airlock. And, um, and we we'll look forward to those science results uh, from those, uh, uh, those creative folks. So again, thank you from Nanorax and all of us down here on the ground. Absolutely, and I want to give a big, big thanks to the NetRx team because it is uh, it is great to have more on the space station, and I am really excited about the possibilities of new research and more research up here. So, good job to everybody. Congratulations. Job well done. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from NetRx. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.